All right, guys. Hello and welcome back to the Canadian Bowler Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Lucas Caldwell, and I'm joined by Daryl again. How's it hey. going, Daryl? Hey, Luke. How's it going? I'm, I'm doing really well. That's good. How's the life being trapped at home? <laughs> it's It's been interesting. Don't worry about the cough. I've had that for a very long time. It's just an off and on thing. But um, uh, yeah, being trapped at home, it, it sucks. Let me just say that. It, it does suck. Okay. Yeah, I can, I, I can feel you on that one, Daryl. Alrighty, guys, before we jump into our guests, I just want to cover some uh, some housekeeping. Uh, we're only five subscribers away from 200, so uh, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button down there on the bottom right. And uh, as always, don't be afraid to uh, ask questions in the chat. We always appreciate them, like the feedback. It's been great. And I guess it's time, Daryl, to bring on our very special guest, the man, the myth, the legend from Alberta, Derek Dillon. Hey, Derek. Well, hi guys, and uh, thanks for having me. How are you doing today, Derek? Good, uh, Mike. Let me just fix You're your good. camera there. I'm gonna make sure you're you're full center. Something happened there, but I think we're good now. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> well, that's the main thing. It can't go off without a without a few hitches here and there, but yeah, you look great, Derek. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> just quick before we get started, Cameron, the friend, says he didn't miss you. <laughs> Yes, well, another class player that needs some mental work. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Alrighty, Derek, I'll start it off with an easy one. Uh, just uh, who's Derek Dillon today? Oh, Lucas, that's a tough one. So complex question first up. Derek Dillon today is a uh, retired uh, business guy that uh, retired about five years ago and is now pretty well full-time with Lawn Bowls, whether it be coaching or various committees or... Uh, boards of clubs or whatever it may be. So uh, my life nowadays is uh, living in Calgary and uh, uh, in, in involved in bowls in one way or another pretty well full time. It's awesome. So some people might ask you, uh, the accent, it's Australian, I'm assuming. Uh, when did you decide and why did you decide to move to Canada? Well, many years ago, uh, I, was tra I was backpacking as a young guy and I met a Canadian girl in Africa and uh, um, ultimately we ended up uh, getting married and uh, I got married in Canada, in Medicine Hat, in fact, uh, back in the uh, late 80s and uh, uh, ended up going to Australia after getting married for about 16 years and then uh, decided to bring her home and uh, bring the kids over here to experience uh, the other half uh, other half of their heritage. Um, back in 2004, we arrived in Canada and uh, we've been here ever since. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Derek, I, I wanted to, to ask you about, um, well, I guess a coach to a coach. Um, I, I know you're a certified performance coach um, and that was, uh, I think it happened last year, uh, around the same time that uh, it happened to me that uh, we both went through that whole process. Um, I was wondering for our audience and for those that are interested in coaching or don't really have an idea, um, to you, how important is the NCCP program that you went through and how instrumental has it been to your coaching development? Yeah, listen, it's a, uh, it's a terrific program. Um, the uh, National Coaching uh, Certification Program, it, and particularly at the, uh, it gives you different levels, obviously, the club coach, competition coach, and then uh, performance coach levels. Uh, they put on a lot of uh, a lot of modules that you do um, do at universities or, or wherever wherever they hold them, and it certainly is a coach, you know, developing it. It gives you a range of subjects that you never often think about in bowls. You know, some of some of the teachings um, you certainly you know don't relate to bowls that well, but there's always snippets in every module that you do. And one of the keys is <clears throat> is that uh, you're meeting other coaches and bouncing things off other coaches, whether it be you know karate, downhill skiing, archery, hockey, football, you you name it. Um, you know they have uh, they have coaches there, and it and it's amazing some of the issues that you know, lots of people in various sports have, we have the same kind of issues in, uh, in, in bowls. And, uh, yeah, the advantage of doing that course is, is really, you know, all the learnings, not just from the 
structured material of, of the mod, various modules, and there's about 14, 15, 16 of them that you can do. But the feedback and uh, ideas and thoughts of, uh, of other coaches and what they deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So it really just adds to your repertoire. You know, there's, there's various things that you can call on. And as you go through coaching and you think, geez, I've got this issue with this athlete. You know, what did I learn at the NCCP, you know, that, uh, that might help on things? And uh, certainly I've been able to draw on that course. Uh, so it's certainly well worthwhile. That's perfect. Uh, Greg Wilson just popped in. I know he's one of your athletes. You also play with them. Uh, don't touch the athletes. <laughs> yes, well, there's, there's certainly, yeah, there's many laws around nowadays. And, yeah. you know, I, I'm an old, more of an old time uh, guy than anything else. And if your skipper wasn't behaving appropriately on the green, particularly during pairs, you used to be able to give him a whack. <laughs> Where nowadays, uh, you know, nowadays, you you know, coaches can't touch the athletes, of course. That's so right. uh, that's where he's uh, pulling that up from. <laughs> what's it uh, What's it like playing with Greg? Uh, yeah, it's been, uh, <clears throat> you know, obviously uh, enjoyable from, uh, from my point of view and uh, hopefully from his. Uh, Greg come from Ontario out to Alberta, I think, in about 2014. And, uh, you know, he was a class player that came out to uh, Alberta and uh, was in the national squad maybe at that time, or he might have been just out of it at that time, but he certainly had been in the squad at that time. And I was lucky enough to uh, team up with him in the pairs, and we've had some success. And... Uh, um, you know, it's 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 a lot of fun. Greg uh, Greg's a type of skip that uh, you know seeks input from his uh, from his uh, teammate, and uh, you know a lot of the time we've been on the same page. And and pairs is a thing that you know sometimes you end up with a guy that you don't even have to say anything. You just have a look, and he understands the look, and you know, and you're thinking strategy along the same lines a lot of the time without even hardly saying a word. So uh, Greg and I tend to have that uh, relationship. He can be a little more aggressive than what I'm used to, um, but we balance it out, and uh, it's been okay so far. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, it's always, it's always nice when you can find a teammate who has similar ideas and can bounce off each other and make things happen. Uh, sure, for sure. Yeah, so Derek, we haven't spoken to any other coaches on the show, uh, and I usually ask what's uh, everybody's favorite moment uh, from bowling. So since you're the coach, I'm going to ask you this, and you don't have to answer if you don't want to, but uh, who has been your favorite uh, player to coach and your least favorite player to coach? <laughs> well... <laughs> Well, favourite player to coach, gee whiz, you know it's, it's uh, that's that's a that's a tough one because you, I do like coaching some of the younger guys because you see them develop, and it's the same with even uh, some of the more mature athletes, uh, and you see them improve. Um, you know, certainly one here uh, in Calgary that uh, that I've done a, a chunk of work with is uh, Mike O'Reilly. You know, he's the president of uh, Calgary Lawn. He, he didn't start bowls until his early 50s. Um, but he he exudes everything that you want an athlete to do. You know, he certainly works hard at the game. He practices. He measures his training. He goes home and puts it on a graph on his computer. And he just eats, sleeps and drinks bowls and uh, wow. is, always, yeah. is, always, is always looking for... Where, where can I improve is his, uh, is in his uh, dialect all the time. So, you know, from that point of view, he, uh, he, he's been terrific to work with. Uh, gee whiz, so, you know, on the, and on the worst player to coach, boy, oh boy, that's got to be tough, that one, I don't know. It's got to be Rob uh, Law, right? Well, you know, Rob, uh, there's certainly been a lot of work done on his, uh, on his delivery, I guess, over the years. Um, when I first saw Rob... Uh, yeah, and I think Daryl's probably done a, a lot of the work on this. Anyway, he, he looked like a robot that was trying to turn inside out. Um, you know, his knees were going all over the place. He, he so low to the ground, he was almost like a gopher underneath the ground. And, uh, um, you know, some of those guys that start off with deliveries just naturally like that uh, are hard to change. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. And then there's always frustrating players too that you know that uh, have got immense talent, and if they just you know if they worked at it harder um, and sort of uh, you know really stepped up and 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 trained harder and 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 did things to improve their game, 
uh, you know that they could be uh, one of the better bowlers around. So, uh, yeah, there's there's been some frustrating ones over the years. There's no doubt about that. Absolutely. Um, so uh, st sticking with the coaching side, um, I, I must say that uh, Alberta has, in the time that I've been bowling, um, really, really improved as far as um, the players that they have, uh, the systems that they have in there to bring uh, younger players up or, or developing players up. Um, and I know you've had a huge part in, in being uh, sort of a guide and a mentor to, to all these athletes. Um, what do you think has been um, some of the secrets to the success of Alberta in the last, I'll say, four or five years that have, have really made them a strong provincial player? Uh, well, certainly the improvement is down to the players more than more than anything. That's for sure. Yeah, you know, certainly what they have now is a more uh, structured professional approach, if I could put it that way. Um, you know, I've been able to send out a number of uh, things for them to read and to focus on in regard to bowls. You know, structured training programs uh, for them to follow. You know, because training is just not you know practice is not playing a game. Practice mm. is doing a structured training program that will help you improve your game so that when you come to play a competitive match, uh, everything that you practice, you'll be able to, you know, to put to put into that game. So a lot of the players have certainly uh, picked up on that. Um, we've certainly had some, a number of uh, development training sessions that I run at every club in Alberta. It's easier to do than Ontario, obviously. But, um, you know, a lot of uh, players, young and old, come out to those. Um, we were lucky enough to pick up a couple of juniors from uh, from the curl sport of curling that, uh, that have uh, come into bowls and uh, have that competitive juices flowing and, and, you know, the competition that they've played in curling and what have you is uh, probably more fierce than, than lawn bowls. So yeah. they're, a, they're certainly a lot more relaxed. Um, and, um, you know, we just have constant contact with the juniors um, out here. We haven't got as many as we'd like, but uh, the, certainly the ones we have, we're able to keep in contact with. They feel owners, you know, feel some ownership of the uh, development program. And we also, uh, along with uh, Dave Matthey, uh, him and I uh, put together a Alberta versus uh, uh, British Columbia test match each year. Uh, and that's just for development players. So those players that may have been to nationals and what have you, but they're younger players, they're still developing, still things to learn. And uh, this is just another, uh, this is over, uh, over a weekend we play this. And, um, you know, it's just more competition for the younger players, which is, uh, which is what most players in Canada need. They need more competition. Perfect. Right. Uh, just seen in the chat a question. I'm going to assume it's for your, both of you guys. Uh, the Australians seem to have a big emphasis on physical fitness. Do you think that is an area uh, that Canada Bulls has to focus on to be at the elite level? Well, I'll, I'll let Derek take this one. Well, that uh, you just cut out on that one a bit, mate. But, um, you know, certainly what I've seen with the national program in Canada, and I've actually um, I've done some training with the Australian uh, high performance squad in, in Australia where they do run some courses and that down there. Um, and, you know, Canada is not that far off in what they do. Uh, compared to Australia, it's just that in Australia, their players, a lot of their players are full-time players. Um, the money is in the game down there that, yeah. that they can play full-time. Uh, certainly what Terry Scott, who's the head coach, uh, uh, has done in Canada is has added um, a lot of professionalism and structure to the program which is very similar to what uh, certainly the, uh, you know, the, the more high-flying money-wise uh, programs of New Zealand and Australia and uh, England, Scotland, et cetera, Malaysia do. 
and it's just not about bowls. You know, we live in Canada. There's snow outside here in Calgary right now, so you you, you know you can't bowl in Canada anywhere unless you're at the indoor <laughs> facility uh, in Vancouver. That's just the way it is. Um, we don't have the money in the game where, like in Australia, you know, if you look at Broad Beach where Ryan Bester is, you know, there's probably five or six world-class bowlers that are employed by the club um, to work either behind the bar, bowls coordinating, whatever it may be, uh, and gives them time to go and play in top-level competitions. We can't do that here in Canada. It's just the way it is. But certainly with the structure and uh, uh, the wholesome uh, program that Terry Scott has introduced is very similar to, uh, to Australia, where it's just not about bowls. You've got family, you've got work life to all balance, and it's you're in three three baskets that you've got to balance things. So um, you know which is uh, which is tough to, tough to do, but certainly I think the uh, national program is on the uh, is on the right track. Uh, in in Canada, we have a we have obviously a a combination of players that are in Canada. And we have a combination of players that are based overseas, like Ryan, uh, Kelly McCarran, Leanne Chinnery, et cetera. Uh, Joanna Cooper has been in New Zealand a lot the last uh, last couple of years with her PhD. So, you know, we do have players that are playing a lot uh, and we do have players that don't play a lot. You know, they're out working, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, that's always going to be tough when you go to a you know, when you're going to Australia to play on fast greens, um, you know, if the World Championships were going ahead uh, in May, and they're not, uh, but we would have had players coming out of the winter here that probably, you know, a lot of them wouldn't have put a bowl down before going down to those championships since kind of November last year. So, so it's tough, but it's a good program at the moment, uh, led by a... Uh, a uh, very experienced uh, bowler and uh, international coach in Terry Scott. He's a Kiwi, which is a shame. But, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, and the level of co coaching in Canada associated with, uh, with the program, like, uh, like Daryl, um, is, uh, is, 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 is certainly, I think, uh, what I've seen since arriving in Canada is that, uh, um, you know, personnel-wise and... Uh, uh, Structure-wise, the uh, program's looking pretty good. That's great. Uh, the, the only the only thing I'd, I'd add to that for Ralph, who who asked the question, is um, um, we do um, have uh, sections for fitness and for mental training. Um, there, there are items that I think out of the out of all the stuff that we do, those are the two that we struggle with the most. And I'm not saying from a program, but even as athletes. Um, trying to maintain that physical fitness while you're doing what Derek said, maintaining family and work and everything else on top of training for bulls, uh, it's difficult. So there is a focus on it. Um, it does help as well as the mental training as well. That, that always helps out. Just as uh, somebody who's not a coach and from a player standpoint, um, I think it's uh, definitely helps, but it's not necessary. Like I've been both ends of the spectrum where I was significantly overweight and out of shape and I still had mild success in bowls. And when I lost 50 pounds and was in the best shape of my life, I didn't really feel like I was much different of a bowler, but uh, maybe the, like the long hot days in the sun were a little bit easier. So I would say it's definitely helps, but it's not super like overly necessary to be in absolute pristine shape as like an Olympic athlete or something. Well, it's a different fitness. There's no doubt about that, but it certainly helps your mental game. Absolutely. If you if 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 you're fit, you know a lot of these guys certainly in Australia, which uh, an advantage over a uh, Canadian player, is that they're on the green, you know, all day long, every day. You know, sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly there was the case before uh, Asia Pacifics in uh, May of last year, that um, you know Ryan Bester, for example had played previous to that tournament had played something like 25 days in a row. Yeah. Now, a lot of that is uh, natural fitness, but he's playing, he's on his feet walking up and down the green 25 days in a row. So, you know, uh, his fitness is certainly more match fit rather than go and run 10 kilometres type fit, uh, but it certainly uh, helps towards the mental strength side of his game. Yeah, I agree. 
Um, so we have another question here in chat, um, and it's, it just goes back to the basics for you, Derek. Uh, what made you take up coaching in the first place? Um, you know, I guess I've always enjoyed sport and getting involved in whatever sport it was uh, at the highest level that I can. And that was the same in business. So, um, you know, certainly when I was younger days playing cricket, I wanted to, you know, playing cricket or tennis, I, I, I wanted to play at the highest level. And bowls was no different. I uh, started playing bowls in 19, about 1982, so I was about 22 years old one of the younger guys around in those days. So I got to, got to a good level that I found, you know, balancing family and, uh, you know, my business life. Um, and certainly wanted to get involved into coaching so that I could get to uh, international level. As, as a player in Australia, I was not going to get to uh, international level. I, could, I couldn't have afford the time and what have you. And by the time I come to Canada, I was probably too bloody old. So uh, <laughs> so what uh, what retirement has been able to afford me is is that, uh, you know, I've been able to get into coaching full time and, uh, you know, with the purpose of uh, coaching at, at, at grass levels and at elite levels. And... Uh, it's it's what's uh, been able to uh, do so far. It's uh, it's enjoyable as hell, and I tell you, it's almost <clears throat> it's almost more pleasurable uh, than um, you know winning a national championship in pairs with with Greg Wilson, for example, uh, coaching him uh, and others to achieve something or even get close. Um, you know, like Greg uh, got the silver medal in the national singles last year. You know, things like those events, even though you finish second, I tell you, brings out more emotion and, and, and more of a sense of achievement than, than uh, doing it as an athlete itself. Right. So that's one of the reasons I like to coach is to see the improvement in people and the advancement of, of the game of lawn bowls. It's a great answer. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I want to have a little fun with you. Um, we've got a few pictures from Facebook and, and other areas that we've dug up. Um, what I'll do is I'll throw them on my screen uh, so that everybody can see. And we'll kind of talk through them. It'll just take a second for it to come up. Right, I see it. So, uh, the first picture we have here is obviously one that you've talked about a couple times. Uh, pairs win in, I believe that was, yeah, that was Willowdale. Um, yep, two, 2015. That's right. Uh, what's the significance of this to you? Well, as far as uh, I didn't win any national titles in Australia okay. <laughs> uh, up, to the, up to that point, uh, up to this point, um, and the likelihood that I will is uh, probably uh, pretty rare. Um, so this was my first uh, national title uh, in, in Canada. I hadn't played in that many uh, national events in, in Canada up to this point. I think this was my second or third year, third year, I think. And um, um, significance because it was my first and uh, playing. I think this was only the second year Greg and I played together. So uh, wow. um, it was, uh, that's why that one's significant. Perfect. How about this one? Yeah, well, this would have been just uh, last year. Uh, this is at Juan de Fuca out on uh, Vancouver Island. And these are, uh, these are the guys uh, with the Alberta development team. Uh, some of them, not all of them, but um, no, it's not. It's the junior nationals at Juan de Fuca again last year. So... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, because the juniors are in the development squad, That's so it right. threw me for a little bit. But uh, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is last year's national juniors at Juan de Fuca. All right, and it looks like there's uh, there's a medal that uh, you're taking home there. Yeah, I think uh, I, you know uh, that was a a bronze uh, equal bronze uh, for her and uh, for Alexis and. Uh, that puts her into the uh, junior squad nationally, I believe, which is what she really wanted to achieve. Perfect. 
Now, I, I brought this up because not only is it a great picture of you, but um, I wanted to ask, uh, who is Derek Dillian? You know, it's amazing how many people over the years, Daryl, have added an I to my surname for some reason. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, this, this photo is actually um, from the uh, Calgary Lawn. I was being interviewed on Global News because uh, this was first week of September for the uh, National Seniors Championship uh, last year, the year before, and it was freezing. <laughs> uh, we'd, we'd got a we'd got a cold snap uh, in Calgary. Uh, players were rugged up. We were chipping ice off the plimps before play would start. Wow! And uh, it was uh, hovering around zero, one, and two degrees, and uh, it was absolutely freezing. And uh, and the national senior triples uh, championship uh, made the news there, and they were interviewing me as an Australian to say how how did I like this weather? And uh, <laughs> I think I uh, I think some of what I said was bleeped out, but uh, <laughs> I said uh, doesn't matter how long you've been here, you just do not get used to it. But yeah, that's a snapshot from uh, from Global News. Perfect. How about this? Gee whiz, there's a couple of characters right there on <laughs> Cara and Robbie Law. So, uh, yeah, this was in Glasgow a couple of years ago um, at the uh, uh, World Under 25, I think, kind of indoor championship, they called it. Um, it didn't have many countries from the Southern Hemisphere, but uh, yeah, these two won the... Uh, well, Cara won the junior singles in Canada, and I think Robbie was runner-up, I believe, to Owen Kirby, who couldn't attend the event. So I think this was in December of 2018 in Glasgow at the indoor facility there. Was this uh, your first kind of stint under Bulls Canada doing coaching? I... No, I think uh, the North American might have been... Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> first, perhaps. Because uh, this was in December, and I think the North American challenge was in October in uh, California, I believe. That's right. That's perfect. I think. <laughs> I know I know three of these people. I don't know about that guy right, standing right next to you, but uh, what do you think about those people? Yeah, that's a uh, boy. Oh boy, I'm making that shirt look a little large there, aren't I? <laughs> sticking the chest. I'm just sticking the chest out there. But uh, uh, yeah, listen, that's the uh, obviously the uh, head coach uh, Terry Scott on the uh, right hand side is uh, uh, Dazzle Fitzgerald, the uh, <laughs> national uh, youth development coach. Uh, Gene Rooney, of course, a uh, very accomplished bowler and. Uh, and myself with plenty of product in the hair there, I noticed. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's at, uh, that photo is actually at Mermaid Beach uh, Bowls Club and right. uh, on the Gold Coast. And uh, that was uh, practice for uh, Asia Pacifics uh, last year. Right. One of the, one of the uh, training days we had at uh, Mermaid Beach. And that's a good squad. I tell you, we, uh, well, I've got to say, we, we do think uh, similar strategies. We do think similar things about the national program. Uh, Terry's brought it all together uh, with structure and uh, professionalism, and uh, I think the results have showed. And I, I do have to do a shout out to you here, where um, between Terry and yourself, um, I was the best kept coach uh, in Australia. I mean, the meals that were made, uh, everything that was taken care of, I, I felt like royalty. It was it was amazing. Yeah, you were a spoiled brat, Daryl. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. Uh, you know, there was uh, plenty of super crisp uh, around for you, and uh, right. the meals were uh, the meals were uh, excellent. There's no doubt about that. And uh, Terry and I certainly put together a lamb roast for the uh, for the whole squad there one on our Sunday off, and uh, it uh, it was a it was a good trip and some good results. And finally, <laughs> these the corduroy shorts. What what's the, the story behind that? Well, everyone needs everyone needs a brand, and uh, <laughs> you know, uh, amazingly, uh, the young players in some of the squads nowadays uh, supposedly have never seen corduroy shorts. You know, they think it's something out of the seventies, which it is, 
Uh, I actually wore a pair of Calderoy shorts when I was backpacking and I travelled to Africa for six months. I left London uh, November 1st and finished in Johannesburg six months later and I wore the same pair of Calderoy shorts the whole way. Um, so the story sort of began from there. And then uh, Calderoy started to come out again, and I certainly snafu'd a couple, a few pairs, uh, all the same, by the way, because they don't come around very often. But uh, it just shows you in fashion, if, if you wait long enough, uh, things you like will come back around. So uh, perfect. A lot of the a lot of the young players, like a Wilson and a Law, etc., have not seen Calderoy uh, much before. So. It's just another aspect of life as a coach that you teach these young players, uh, you know, about uh, things about life, you know, other than just bowls, Daryl, as you would know. That's right. <laughs> um, so we have a question from actually a guy that's local to me, uh, Dave Allen out in Preston, um, Cambridge, Ontario. Uh, how can Bulls Canada and provincial organizations help develop bulls for people with disabilities? We have some experience with blind bowlers, but I really haven't seen much with wheelchairs uh, and others. You know, no, we haven't. And we certainly can. And I think uh, Don Caswell and uh, Catherine McGregor uh, are certainly two people I know that are kicking that off. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, current climate in the world has uh, kind of uh, stopped a lot of uh, that, those advancements. Um, and it's certainly something that we can introduce uh, uh, it to disability bowls uh, in, in Canada. We certainly for many years had blind bowlers uh, go overseas and compete at world championships and what have you. Um, and certainly at Calgary Lawn, we've had, uh, we've had some, uh, some foray into uh, disability players. Um, so it's certainly another aspect of the, it's, it's a game that uh, disabled players can play, whether Absolutely. in a wheelchair or whether, whether it may be. There's certainly world championships, there's Commonwealth Games, et cetera, that, uh, that you can certainly level that you can get to. And it's just, you know, one of those things that uh, lawn bowls is not a, <clears throat> in Canada, is not something that if you said lawn bowls to the <clears throat> general person in Canada, they may not know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah. Um, so it's just, just a matter of certainly getting that word out. It's an aspect that clubs could certainly promote um, there's certainly ways to do it. Uh, you know, you're not going to damage the greens with uh, with wheels from the wheelchair. Uh, there's certainly rubber pads you can put on the end of walking sticks, etc., etc., etc. That that clubs over that other uh, jurisdictions overseas have been doing for many, many years. Perfect. Yeah, I know there's programs uh, being put in place. Obviously, um, of the unfortunate situation that we're in right now, there's just none of that being pushed forward but i know that it's it's in the books and and it's it's ready to go once we actually get to kick off oh absolutely you know absolutely it's another avenue of uh, getting players that's for sure at your club for sure do you have uh, any more questions for derek today daryl uh no i think i think i've exhausted my list <laughs> All righty. Well, I would like to like to thank you for your time today, Derek. It was a good time. It was, I had a good time talking to you. We appreciate you. And I uh, hope that you have a good rest of your day. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. And uh, keep up the good work. This is a terrific program. And uh, it gives all of us uh, who are sitting at home thinking about bowls uh, <laughs> rather than being able to do uh, anything about it. Uh, certainly on uh, scanning YouTube, watching games and Facebook that uh, on things that are being uh, reprogrammed, re, re shone there, that uh, this is another aspect of bowls that uh, promotes the game, uh, gets uh, gets the sport in the minds of people. And uh, it's guys like you that are, uh, are the future of the game. And uh, it's great that you're promoting it this way. So thanks for having us. Perfect. Thank you a lot, Derek. Thanks, Derek. All righty. That was a good chat with uh, the one they call Captain Corduroy. Good time. <laughs> That's right. Um, so I know we haven't really touched on it and it's, it's what's going on, but uh, what do you think about all the shutdowns and all the, the kind of stuff that's going on right now? Uh, everything's on hold. We're kind of locked down in our houses. Um, I guess it's just hold as usual. What do you think? Um, 
I mean, yeah, I guess since the last time we spoke, Bulls Canada came out with the uh, the big article on the, I guess, cancellation or suspension of pretty much everything for the upcoming season. Um, I mean, for me personally, it's kind of lame because I was really looking forward to playing in my last year of the under-25 championships, especially that it was here at home in Peterborough, so it would have been nice to hopefully put on a show for some locals and my friends and family and whatnot, so I think that would have been uh, a lot of fun. Um, I was also really looking forward to playing in the provincial stuff and just trying to see what was going on there, and a lot of other things I had scheduled with that seemed like they were going to be good in the Bulls world. Um, I mean, hopefully things change but um i'm gonna be honest with you i'm gonna be kind of negative about it i don't see that happening in the near future personally but who knows um yeah uh, other than bowls aside yeah it's pretty boring sitting at home uh <laughs> like i mean i've been laid off for god knows how long now it seems That's like right. forever it was it was before this whole thing so i've been kind of prepared to sit at home so it's not fun uh yeah especially this time of year there's no, really not a whole lot to do no, I can tell you, I, I was actually working from home uh, a fair bit um, before this all kicked off, and now it's exclusively at home. And I know my company, I'd say about 90%, if not 95% of the people are working remotely, and there's only kind of a skeleton crew at the office scattered, and they've scattered them all through the office to keep them away from each other. Um, yeah. It's it's a bizarre, bizarre world. When I, I go outside or I when I have gone out to actually pick up some groceries, Everything except for like the supermarket um, or some of the gas stations, it's it's a ghost town at some places. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ralph Alice in the chat was saying, if you look at large sports organizations like the NBA, their most optimistic plan is to reopen at the end of June. That might not happen. It's very hard to predict. I agree. I mean, I hope things start up again in June or May or even sooner or a little bit later. I, but again, yeah, you're very right. It's definitely going to be very hard to predict. Who knows what's going to happen? It's very unclear for sure that's right yeah and so it's kind of funny i mean daryl you know but may, a lot of other people don't know it's like i'm a little bit of a nerd and spending so much time at home i don't even know what to do with my time that's how boring it's been <laughs> <laughs> i know uh luke and i talk quite a bit um almost uh almost every day probably. almost every day at some point yeah um and it's just it's sometimes hard to find things to do um you know you get outside for a little bit but you can't go and do too many things because you want to be responsible. You want to have that social distancing. So maybe your backyard or maybe um, just walking around the block a little bit just to get some fresh air. Um, it, being stuck in your house, uh, it's a total mindset change where uh, what do you do? Can you pick up some projects that you haven't done? If you don't have projects, um, you know, what, what can you create for fun? And uh, it, it, it could be a struggle. Yeah, for sure. Um, I know for me, when I was on the the fourteen day lockdown from my doctor, uh, waiting for my test results for COVID nineteen, it was pretty boring because I couldn't even go outside. I couldn't really leave my room. It was pretty boring. Um, so that wasn't a whole lot of fun. But now that I can at least go outside, it's not terrible. Uh, with the negative test results, I can at least do a few more things. I can go get myself groceries if I need to, or I can go outside and walk around or whatever. Uh, I'm a big fan of fishing, so I mean, it's that would be something I would like to do, but unfortunately, no fishing opens in around here until the end of June, so I've got a while to wait for that, so I can't social distance myself on the lake yet. <laughs> but the good news is, and he didn't say it, but he kind of hinted at it, um, Luke's test was negative, so that's, yeah. that's very, very good. Uh, we were glad to hear about that. I hope that nobody has to take that test. It's awful. It hurts. And it sucks. <laughs> That's all I can say. And it is definitely a scary feeling when you walk into a hospital and everyone's basically in a hazmat suit except for yourself. So I can imagine. It's interesting. It's, it's interesting to say the least. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you want to transition over to this, but um, we've been working on something to try to pass the time for all bowlers. I'll let you take the lead on this one. All right. I'm going to throw up the desktop so you won't see us for a couple seconds. It might take just a second to uh, to show up. But um, here for the show, for our website, for, um, for everybody out there, we've created uh, kind of a fun thing. It's, it's kind of like a March Madness feel. It's um, 
<laughs> the end of March. So we, we're not going to call it March Madness, but uh, we're calling it uh, the Gloat Championship. So the greatest lawn bowler of all time. Um, I know some people have very, very strong opinions about who they think is the best lawn bowler ever. Um, but what we've done is we've uh, created a list of 32 bowlers. And you can see the full bracket here of some of the best bowlers from around the world. Um, and what we've done is pick players from as many countries as we can to get a full global representation. We've picked players um, from both genders, trying to get as equal a split as possible between male and female. Um, and also um, just get a feel of, of people from different uh, fields of the game. So uh, some were dominant in indoor, some were dominant in outdoor, uh, some had a fantastic Commonwealth Games records, um, and some just had like World Bowls or World Indoor Bowls, or, or um, even some had one from each. It's been really, really interesting for me to go through this and see some of the names. Some people I didn't know, but um, having looked at their records and their um, trying to find some videos on them, I can really respect what they did for the game and, and how they did. So we've got old, new legends uh, that have uh, long since retired and, and don't play anymore. And we've got some that are still padding their resume uh, as we speak. Um, so what we want to do is invite everybody uh, that watches this podcast, that looks at CanadianBowler.com and uh, um, enjoys long bowls to take a look at this. We're going to open up voting. It'll uh, Some polls will be going up on the Canadian Bowler Facebook site uh, very shortly. I think they're scheduled for about 1230. They'll be up. And what you can do is you can go on and vote uh, based on eight of the matchups. And I will tell you the matchups right now. Um, the matchups that are going up today for voting will be number one, Alex Marshall versus Robert Perel, Perella. Sorry. Uh, number four, Karen Murphy versus Laura Daniels. Number five, Tony Alcock versus Siti Zalina Ahmad. Uh, number eight, which is Kelsey Cottrell versus Robert Wheel. Number nine, David Brandt versus Dick Falkins. Number 12, Norma Shaw versus Lorna Trigwell. Uh, number 13, which is Paul Foster and Jerry Baker. And the final one is number 16, which is down at the bottom here, which is Andy Thompson versus Kelvin Kirko. Um, some of these are some heavyweight bouts. Uh, some of them are very, very accomplished. And uh, I'll just transition back to Luke and I here. Um, I'm hoping that this can be a lot of fun. I, I encourage everybody to go on, look at these matchups, do your research, um, understand what these bowlers have done, not only as far as winning in the game of bowls, but what they've done outside the bowls. Have they inspired their country? Have they inspired internationally? Have they done some coaching, done some executive work, all that kind of stuff? What have they meant to bowls and why are they the greatest lawn bowler of all time? Absolutely. Uh, and yeah, of course, even if uh, you know some people who love the sport of lawn bowls, uh, don't be afraid to share it around. Even if they haven't seen the show, we'd like it to kind of reach as far as possible. Uh, have lots of good numbers on the votes, and it'll be a good time. Unfortunately, Ralph, there is no Vegas odds established yet. It would be, it would, and it would actually be kind of neat to put odds on it. But I don't know how we would do that. Yeah, we'll have I'm... to get in. We'll have to get in touch with Ryan Stadnick and get a Calcutta going. It, it took us long enough just to come up with the list and and come up with uh, um, more information on this. It's, uh, it's a tedious job. And what we'll do is this will be the first eight for round one. And then the next show will announce the winners. Um, I think voting closes on Thursday, uh, just before the show. Um, so that's roughly two weeks or just under two weeks. And um, we will also announce who the next, or obviously it'll be the last eight uh, that we will be competing. And then we get down to the nitty gritty where we start getting into semifinals, quarterfinals, and then eventually right down to uh, uh, the final battle, which will be for the greatest of all time. Yeah, and I think it'll be kind of neat going forward. We can have a little segment in the show where we maybe we uh, try to find some clips, um, maybe in the final eight or something of each player and kind of just highlight 
highlight what they've done and what why why people know who they are and whatnot. I think that'd be kind of neat. So, uh, also, so people know, if you go to our YouTube channel, which is obviously if you're listening to this live right now, uh, you're there. Um, if you can share our YouTube channel out and tell people to go there, we will have a collection, which um, right now I think I have about 10 videos, which will drop at about one o'clock today. That'll highlight almost every single person that's uh, in the first eight matches. There's some legendary matches that we're putting up. I've scoured YouTube and other sites just to try to find video that highlight uh, each individual player. So uh, go on there, watch some matches, get a sense of who these people are and what they've done and give them the respect that they deserve. Learning about um, all these people will give you an idea of just how great long bowling has been. And hopefully coming out of what we're in today, long bowls can be just as great now as it was uh, when some of the, the legends of our sport were playing. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, for all updates on the videos and whatever else, if you hit, uh, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but if you hit the subscribe button, the red subscribe button, there's actually a bell beside it. And if you <laughs> click the bell, it'll turn on notifications. So every time a video goes live, you'll be able to uh, to see um, whatever it is. Like it'll just notify. I think it goes to your email and I think it also would be on your YouTube client somewhere as well. That's right. Um, so really, we, we just want to have some fun. We're here, we're stuck in our houses. Um, you have time and you want to know a little bit more about um, about long bowls and about what's going on. You know, have those conversations. If you feel strongly that someone deserves to win the matchup, comment, post about it. Uh, tell them, tell everybody why you think they deserve and try to sway those voters to the person that you think. Um, it's a great way to have conversations. It's a great way to reminisce about some of the great matches that we've had and uh, some of the people that have won some amazing championships and gone on some fantastic streaks. It's uh, it's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, All righty. Oh, you go ahead, Daryl. Oh, so um, links in the description below. Okay, go to CanadianBuller.com. We're going to have... Uh, small bios on every single person that we have in this tournament. Um, go to our YouTube channel, which if you're on here right now, uh, don't forget to come back and take a look at all the videos that we're going to be posting on these competitors. And also go to our Facebook page, uh, Canadian Bowler on Facebook. That's where all the voting will take place and we'll try to push people to that location so um, we can get as many voters as possible. And don't forget to share this around to your friends, family, um post it in your bulls groups uh, get people involved let's let's have some fun with this all right yeah and it's just as easy as one click all you got to do is click the share button on the facebook and it'll go to everybody that uh, sees your stuff on their feed on facebook so that'll definitely help it go a long way for sure absolutely and uh i guess with that being said i guess that brings us to the end of the show daryl it's time for the final end yeah unfortunately uh we're skipping uh coach's corner and some some other stuff this week um, we had a great conversation with Derek Dillon. I'm really happy that he came on the show and, and gave his expertise. I also, I forgot, um, and I was, I know I was supposed to remember, I just wanted to give a shout out to him. Uh, he was honored with uh, the Athletic Leader Award um, from the Calgary Booster Club. He's the first long bowler to receive this award. Um, it means a lot to bowlers in Alberta. Um, I know it means a lot to him. So congratulations, Derek, on that. I meant to ask you about that, but... Um, Really um, fantastic job. Great coaching out in Alberta. And um, looking forward to having some more awesome guests. If you know any guests, you know, give it in the comments below. Send us some tweets. Uh, send us some Facebook messages. Let us know who you want to see on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, well, with that being said, thanks, everybody, for tuning in today. Thanks again to Derek Dillon and Daryl for joining me today. Um, it's all been a pleasure, as always. And... Uh, Hope everybody enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to, like Daryl said, comment down below on guests or advice, whatever you have. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe button, make sure you get your bell on so you get all of our notifications. I hope everybody has just as much fun as us uh, with the, the gloat challenge that we have going on. I hope so. And I hope that everybody has a great rest of their day today, a good weekend. Uh, and as always, guys, until next time, may all your shots be touchers. Yeah.